Hello friends, Derek from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So for the next two days, we have a goal. We gotta get two groups of people back to the land of Zarahemla and we gotta get them back there safely. And these groups are there for two different reasons. So we'll talk about one today and one tomorrow. This first group is King Limhi's people. And now when I say King Limhi's people, this is also King Noah's people and King Zenith's people. Okay, this is a group of individuals who went up from the land of Zarahemla to the land of Lehi Nephi to try to establish and try to get that land of their inheritance. And it really goes south very quickly and they're in bondage for many years. So it could be argued that that was not the best of ideas that they could have done. But it's interesting to watch how this people evolves, what they learn, what they grow from. And I think it's a great little story to help us in our own lives. Now, you got to go back to Abinadi's message right here because Abinadi really starts this off Verses 23, 24, and 25, you remember those three words which were Abinadi's message, except they repent, right? You see that in verse 23, except this where people repent and turn to the Lord their God, they shall be brought into bondage, and none shall deliver them except it be the Lord the Almighty God. Verse 24, yea, it shall come to pass that when they shall cry unto me, I shall be slow to hear their cries. Yet I will suffer them that they shall be smitten by their enemies. Verse 25, and except they repent in sackcloth and ashes, that deep repentance, that deep humility, and cry mightily to the Lord their God, I will not hear their prayers. Neither will I deliver them out of their afflictions. And thus saith the Lord, and thus he hath commanded me. So the people didn't like that message. They probably didn't understand the context of it. But now we fast forward to chapter 21, where we see the prophecy of the Benedi being fulfilled. We kind of talked about it a little bit yesterday, how Limhi's people are smitten and defeated by the Lamanites, as it says in the chapter heading. As these Lamanites have been stirred up to anger. Again, that message has been brought up all through this right here. And we talked about that yesterday. As Limhi's people and the Lamanites are fighting with one another. It says the afflictions of the Nephites were great and there was no way that they could deliver themselves out of their hands for the Lamanites had surrounded them on every side. This is Mormon. Now one of the things here, Mormon makes a lot of commentary through this. And he's just like, look, these guys could not deliver themselves, but he keeps showing us that they're trying to do it. Verse number six, the people murmur against the king. They did afflict the king sorely with their complaints, but they gathered themselves together, put on their armor, fought against the Lamanites, and again, the Lamanites did beat them, drove them back, slew many of them. Then you've got this frustration and this loss right here. Widow mourning for her husband, the son and the daughter mourning for their father, brothers for their brethren. This is a rough situation right here, but again, it's a fulfillment of prophecy from what Abinadi said. Verse 11, here they are trying it again. Their continual cries did stir up the remainder of the people of Limhi to anger against the Lamanites. They went to battle. They were driven back again, suffering much loss. They went a third time and suffered in like manner. And so they got three times here where they're just trying to go to battle on their own. It is not working. Remember the message of Abinadi, except this people repent. So what happens is verse number 13, they did humble themselves even to the dust, subjecting the themselves to the yoke of bondage, submitting themselves to be smitten, to be driven to and fro and burdened according to the desires of their enemies. And they did humble themselves even until the depths of humility, going back to what Abinadi had taught them, even in sackcloth and ashes. They did cry mightily to God, yea, even all the day long did they cry unto their God that he would deliver them out of their afflictions. Here they're finally saying, we can't do this on our own. We need to repent. We need to change. We need to rely on God. Now, just as Abinadi said, verse 15, now the Lord was slow to hear their cry because of their iniquities. Nevertheless, the Lord did hear. That's a cool phrase right there. The Lord knew what was going on. He allows the natural consequences of our behaviors to take place, but he still hears us. And he begins to soften the hearts of the Lamanites. They did begin to ease their burdens. And yet the Lord did not see fit to deliver them out of bondage as of yet. But what happens is they begin to prosper by degrees. They begin to raise grain and flocks and herds, and they did not suffer for hunger. And despite all of the craziness, they're able to relatively be peaceful for the next little while, which is when we see Ammon and those 16 strong men that King Mosiah sent up to the land of Lehi-Nephi from the land of 
Zarahemla. Now there's a cool little connection back in verse number 14. It says, they did cry unto their God that he would deliver them out of their afflictions. Now one of the cross references I have put right by that is Mosiah chapter seven, verse number one. Now you remember this, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Came to pass that after King Mosiah had a continual peace for the space of three years, he was desirous to know concerning the people who went up to dwell to the land of Lehi-Nephi. Now with them praying in the land of Lehi-Nephi, here's King Mosiah in the land of Zarahemla. His people had heard nothing from them from the time they left the land of Zarahemla. Therefore, they wearied him with their teasings. All of a sudden, these people are praying for deliverance. You've got a king over in Zarahemla who starts thinking about this people that had been gone for 70 to 80 years. That is the power of prayer, my friends. Oftentimes, your prayers for deliverance can inspire others to act, which is why King Mosiah sent Ammon and 16 strong men to the land, and here they are met up right here. They prayed for deliverance, and Ammon comes along to help them in that deliverance. I think that's a cool little principle. Well, the happy ending to this particular group, chapter 22, it's kind of a fun little story, a great escape from this land, if you will. They get the Lamanite guards drunk, they're able to get out of there, and by the time the Lamanites recognize that they are gone. They are back in the land of Zarahemla. Uh, the chapter heading simply says, plans are made for the people to escape from Lamanite bondage. It's a cool story. The Lamanites are made drunk. The people escape, return to Zarahemla, and become subject to King Mosiah. In fact, verse number 14, King Mosiah received them with joy, and they no longer had wearied him with their teasings. So I think the great lesson here in all of this is when we get ourselves into bondage due to our dumb choices, we need the help of the Savior to deliver us. We've got to stop trying it on our own. We need to take that time to do what Abinadi said, to repent. And when we do that, we are going to find the blessings of deliverance in our lives. And the Lord is going to help us through that. Great little message. We got one group of people back to Zarahemla. Tomorrow, we're working on another group. I'm grateful for these stories and I'm grateful for the principles they teach me. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for sharing these messages. We are so grateful that you do that. If you like what you see, click that like button. And you've got to go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Godspeed. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.